Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers or Let's Build, this is appropriate to both. Um, I've got a good example of a bad power supply here and I wanted to show it to you so you could see what makes a bad power supply. So um, what we're going to do here is this is an uh, it's an Ace Power A600BR, but this is to all intent and purpose a no name brand. It's got a brand name on it, but no one knows who that is, no one cares. Um, this you could replace this brand name with basically anything you know you could put CIT color sit on it and it'd be the same thing so the fit and finish firstly it's not a very heavy power supply that means uh, the components in there are all very lightweight cheapy components the heat sinks in there are small and weedy and they've got lots of holes in them and stuff like that there's not a lot of mass in there which means it's going to run hot uh, and that means that things are going to fail earlier on and it means that the fan is going to have to do more work. It's going to have to spin faster to get that heat out of the power supply, which means it'll be noisy. Uh, it's also got weedy wires on it, which are not the end of the world because these wires are often over spec anyway. Um, but again, it's just not ideal. So it feels like a cheapy power supply. But that alone isn't always the end of the world because if you're building a cheap computer like an office box or a cheap gaming rig that only costs say three or four hundred quid, then you know you don't really want to spend a hundred pounds on your power supply. So you might be buying something like this. Um, and you know some of the power supplies I've used in the past, like uh, the Game Maxes, you know they're cheap power supplies. They don't weigh a huge amount and they've got slightly weedy cable on them. But those are fine. Now the way to tell. Is to look at the rails on the side. So on the power supply we've got our mains input on the back of the power supply and then we've got all of the outputs on this side and all of those outputs are comprised of these voltage rails that we can see on the side here. So what do these all mean? So we've got 3.3, 5, 12, minus 12 and 5 VSB. So firstly minus 12 is a reference voltage for op amps and stuff like that so we don't really care about this one it doesn't actually do any current handling it's used as a reference voltage uh, 5 vsb um, i believe this is the standby 5 volt rail so this just keeps the lights on when the power is off uh, and it just means that when you push the power button it can wake up and light up the whole rest of the computer so again not too worried about these two because they're ju they're just their utility um, power rails. The ones that really matter are the 3.3, 5 and most importantly the 12 volt rail and that's where this power supply really falls over. Now it's apparently a 600 watt power supply um, and if you've got if you've got a 600 watt power supply then you're like well okay well I want 600 watts to all of my components and well what are all of your components? The bits you care about are the CPU, the graphics card, and you know, like your, your hard drives and your SSD and stuff like that. Those are the big three workhorses in your computer, right? Now, all of those are powered from the 12 volt rail. And those are the biggest power draws. For example, your CPU, if you've got an i7, that's a 95 watt TDP. Or if you've got an i9, that's probably 120 watt TDP. Might even be more under full load or overclocked. And if you've got a high end graphics card, that is probably drawing, you know, possibly up to 200 watts, maybe even more on the top end ones. So your all of your big huge wattage draws are all on the 12 volt rail. So that's where we want it to deliver that 600 watts to. So if we bring in a calculator and we do volts times amps, 12 times 26 equals 312. So this thing can only actually put out 312 watts on its 12 volt rail. That's really bad. That's half of the total output. So although this is a 600 watt power supply, as far as our CPU, graphics and drives are concerned, we can only use half of that. We can only use 300 watts and that's really low. So what about the rest of the power? Are they just lying about the 600 watts? And it's kind of sort of, um, the rest of it is actually there. If we run the numbers on the other rails, so let's start with the 3.3. So uh, clear the calculator, 3.3 uh, times 30. That's 99 watts on the 3.3 rail. And then 5 times 36 is 180. So 180 plus 99 plus uh, 312 gives us 591. And then if we actually, the, the standby circuit there, 5 volts times 2.5, that's another 12.5, I think. Um, 
and then there's the rest of it basically. So you've got 600 watts in this box, but the problem is, is that half of it is in places where we don't need it. We don't need 36 amps and 30 amps on these rails. You don't need that much power. These are like logic rails. You don't need that kind of horsepower there. And just to prove a point, here comes the Antec. This is my Antec HCP 1000. Let's take a look at this one. So here is the HCP 1000. And look at this, it's got quad 12 volt rails and each rail is 40 amps. That's 480 watts per 12 volt rail. So this thing is actually, you know, this thing has actually got 480 times four, it's actually got 1920 watts in it. It's got nearly two kilowatts in the 12 volt rail. You just can't pump all of that out at the same time. Um, however, the point is, is that if one of these rails is going to the CPU and another one is going to, you know, the graphics card, another one is going to the ATX connector and so on, wherever that load is, it's got, you know, at least 480 watts on tap for that particular load. So no matter how you wire this thing up, it can deliver that full thousand watts to your load. And notice how even on this big monster power supply, it's only got 25 amps on the 5 and 3.3 volt rails. This stupid poxy ace power piece of crap has got more power in its logic rails than a HCP 1000. That's how you know that that thing is really bonkers. You don't need that much amperage on your logic rails, not by a long shot. Um, so a really interesting thing about this power supply, if I turn it on its back here, this is a fully modular power supply and they actually label the rails on this one. So if I peel these back, you can actually see there, you've got 12V1, V2, V3, and then V4. So you can actually pick and choose which rails you're connecting to. So you can put your peripherals on, the, on rail one, and you can have rail two just for, you can make sure that your graphics cards are on separate voltage rails, for example. You can plug um, your, if you've got an SLI set up, you can have one of your graphics cards on V1 and the other graphics card on V2, or you can split them, or you can have them across V2 and V3, and so on. So this one actually allows you to pick and choose where you're drawing power from, and that's why, as you can see, rather than having all of these connectors together, I've actually got them spaced out across the rails, so I can separate out where the power is coming from when I'm using this power supply. Not that I need to, because it's got a bloody thousand watts in it, but you get the point. So that's why this stupid ace power, this stupid ace power supply thing is really crap, because most of its power is on those logic rails where we can't use it. It's of no use to us at all over there. And we've only got 300 on the 12 volt rail where we actually want it. So that's why this power supply is terrible. So just to give you some more examples, let me grab some other power supplies and we'll just have a look at the voltage ratings on those so you can get a grasp as to what other stuff you see out there. Let me grab some examples. I've got so many dead power supplies at the moment. I'm saving them up because I want to do a power supply repair video. Ugh. Okay, let's start over here. EVGA Supernova. 750 watts, what have we got? So again, fairly beefy power supply this one. It's got quad 12 volt rails and each one is 20 amps. Um, and they've actually, interestingly enough, uh, this one is subdivided again. So each one is 20 amps, so 12 times 20 is 240, times four would be 960, how, so again, we're really over specced on the 12 volt rails here. So you can load up individual chains and individual rails without it petering out. However, the absolute total output can't exceed 732, probably because that's just simply what the actual output from that rail is rated for. So uh, the input is delivered for a lot, but they don't want you to load it up too far because something else will go pop, basically. But the point is because each subrail is overrated, you can have a very unbalanced load. You can have a really heavy 
high draw CPU in there that's bonkers overclocked while your graphics card is using nothing and it will still be able to deliver or the other way around you might have you might have a tiny little i3 in there using very little power but a huge massive SLI graphics card setup that's weighting down the other side of the 12 volt rails so by overspecking the individual rails like this it can handle a very unbalanced load uh, and once again, we've got minus 12 and 5 VSB ones. Notice how the 5 VSB rail, that's uh, quite un that's down at 3 amps there. Um, so again, doesn't need a lot because it's a standby rail. Um, and then once again, we've got 25 amps on the 5 volt and 3.3 volt rails because those don't need very much. So that's the EVGA. Let's have a look at a Corsair CX500M. Very common power supply. Very good, cheap, all-round power supply. Uh, so on this one, Ugh. get my camera straightened out. So on this one, uh, Corsair like, favor the single 12 volt rail. So we've got single 38 amp rail and they've been good enough to write the wattages on this one. So it's a 500 watt power supply and it can do 456 watts on the 12 volt rail. And that's not bad, Obama, you know. Uh, it's not the total label wattage, which is nice. Um, you know, as you can see, these big boys like the EVGA and the Antec, they will actually exceed the label wattage on their 12 volt rail. This one doesn't meet it, but still 456 watts just on the 12 volt rail is pretty good. That means you know you've got a minimum of 450 watts to play with on your big components. No problems whatsoever. Once again, three amps on the standby rails and we've got a 25 amp and a 20 amp 3.3 and 5 volt rail respectively. The 5 volt rail can be a little bit lower on the amperage because it's got more volts in it. So these are actually delivering about the same amount of power because this one is lower voltage, higher amperage. So you get the idea. It's probably about 60 watts a piece if you run the numbers on that. Um, so yeah, again, not bad. Uh, so let's go to a cheap course there. I've got a VS450 here. So this is Corsair's budget power supply. Their poor man's one. Again, single rail, uh, it's a 450 watt power supply and it can do 408 watts on the 12 volt rail. Not bad. And we've got weaker rails here. We've got two dual 16 amp rails on the Logic ones. And uh, weirdly, we've got a higher um, standby rail there at two and a half amps. Um, but again, you get the idea. It's not delivering the full label wattage, but it's okay. It's delivering most of the label wattage just on the 12 volt alone. Uh, and once again, if you add everything up, look, we've got 408 plus 100 watts there. It's actually 508 plus a bit more from the reference rails. Um, it's They all add up to well in excess of the total label wattage, unlike the stupid Ace Power one that couldn't even meet it. So, yeah. And finally, and finally, here's another crap one. Here's a color sit power supply or a CIT. Again, this is another garbage one, which looks awfully similar on the inside. Same kind of heat sinks. What about this one? 500 watts, apparently. Let's run those numbers. Single 12 volt rail at 20 amps, which is 12 times 20, which is 240. So again, 500 watt power supply, only 240 watts on the 12 volt rail. Now this is one where you're really going to come a gutser. Like this ACE power supply, because it's 600 watts total, you know, with 50% of the wattage on the 12 volt power supply, that you still get 300, so you'll scrape by. However, this one, despite being a 500 watt power supply, actually probably won't power up a big system because you could easily spike past 240 watts on a gaming computer, no worries whatsoever. Uh, so suddenly you're actually going to get lockups and even, you know, I mean, it might do it at burst, but over time, this is quickly going to, this is quickly going to burn out this power supply trying to deliver too much on its 12 volt rail alone. And once again, we have massively overrated logic rails at 30, 28 amps and 30 amps respectively uh, to compensate for the rest of the power. So again, you know, as we've seen on the other power supplies, you don't need 28 and 30 amps on those rails but they have beefed up the small low power voltages because it's cheap to do that to beef up the total apparent output from the power supply. However, although this thing says 500, they've just added all that up 
And once again, when you compare that to the other ones, even the VS450, which is a poor man's power supply, was going well in excess of its total label voltage when you add the rails together. With this one, they've added the rails together to get to 500. So there we go. That's how you look at power rails and judge your power supply. So if you look at your power supply and you find that um, it's only delivering, say, 75% of the power on the 12 volt rail, like some of those Corsairs were doing, that's not the end of the world. If that wattage is enough for what you need, like the VS450, uh, that's still doing 400 watts on the 12 volt rail. That's okay. You can run a computer off of that. That's fine. Um, however, if you've got a 500 watt and it's only doing 240, that's not okay. That's going to be a problem. And that's why this power supply is garbage. And that's why uh, this power supply is garbage. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. One more thing as well that I nearly forgot to mention is the 80 plus rating of the power supply. Now, this is the efficiency rating. Uh, I've done a video on this before, and the reason why um, uh, efficiency ratings aren't really that important to your power supply. But one thing that I may have not really uh, emphasized in that video is that you do want an 80 plus rating. So, for example, the distance between an 80 plus bronze and an 80 plus platinum on your electric bill is going to be negligible. To be honest, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to save you a real amount of money. Um, and for example, when I calculated, I think I calculated a bronze versus a platinum or something like that. And the difference was like, you know, six quid in a year in absolute unrealistic worst case use scenario, like assuming your computer is on all day, every day kind of thing. So don't worry too much about getting, for example, a, a gold rated power supply versus a bronze. However, um, if the power supply doesn't have an 80 plus rating at all, it's most likely got garbage parts in it. Whereas if you have that 80 plus rating, even if it's an 80 plus white rating, it means that it has a minimum standard of efficiency. And if it's got half decent efficiency, that means that it's going to be half decent quality. So if you're looking for cheap power supplies, making sure that it has an 80 plus rating of at least 80 plus white, ideally 80 plus bronze if you can, means that it's probably going to be pretty good. Whereas another thing to note is that our crap power supplies here don't have an 80 plus rating on them at all. There's no 80 plus logo whatsoever on either of these two crap power supplies. Whereas all the other ones I've got here, um, you know, the EVGA is a bronze, uh, the Corsair, this one doesn't have an 80 plus logo on it, but I know that this is bronze rated. Pretty cer certain that the VS is 80 plus rated, although it might be a white. Uh, and my Antec, uh, this is called a HCP Platinum because it's 80 plus platinum rated. Uh, and most of the high end Corsairs, like the Corsair RMX series, those are all gold rated. So again, look for an 80 plus logo because while this is not an absolute standard that it's a good power supply, but it's another good guideline. It's an indicator that the power supply doesn't have complete garbage inside it. And once again, none of anything I've said here is an absolute truth. It's a guideline. You know, if you've got really good wiring, you can have like a really nice paint job and really nice wiring and it's all braided but then you look at the rails and they're bad. It's still a bad power supply. Or you could have a really naff tin box with really weedy wiring, but when you actually look at the labels, it's got really good rails on it. It's not a bad power supply. It's up to you to decide which of those bits are important to you, but you need to look at all of them added together as a whole to judge whether the power supply itself is any good or not. So past that, thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.